Moving on to the material culture of what I'm wearing, all the accoutrements that I have. Uh, I want to start with my right side here on my right hip. Uh, a lot of visitors like to call this the man purse, um, but it isn't a man purse. But I'm very thankful to have this bag here. Does anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess as to what's in this side on this pouch? Powder bag. Powder bag close. It would be your cartridge box. If you're a rifle infantry, which I'll explain in a little bit when we talk about the, the firearm, you'd have a powder bag, maybe a powder horn. Uh, but for the British issued, uh, they'd have a cartridge box. This is where you'd keep your rounds, how many times you could fire. Does anybody want to take a guess about how many times a typical British soldier would have? How many rounds? How many times does he can shoot? 20. 20? Any other guesses? No guesses? You look like you have a guess. I just think less. Less, less than 20? Yeah. Oh, well, you're right. It was 18, but not, not too much less. Um, as you can see, this is what your cartridge box looks like. It's basically a block of wood drilled with holes. The reason why they didn't want to stuff cartridges in there is because a cartridge is basically a lead ball at the bottom filled with black powder and then rolled in paper. And if that paper was ripped or came apart in your cartridge box, you then have black powder filling up your cartridge box. And if for somehow a spark from your firearm was entering into your gun, you're not looking, uh, you're not having a good day. Actually, you're probably not having any more days. And so it was very important to have that neat and organized so that way um, it would lessen the cost of injury if that sort of thing were to happen. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the cartridge and the firearm when I get to that part. Uh, but moving on to my left side, I have another bag on the other side. And uh, this is what I like to call the modern day lunchbox in the 18th century. Uh, this is called your haversack in your canteen, obviously. Uh, this is where you keep your daily provisions or any personal effects that you may want to carry around as you come out on this campaign. Uh, what's on their menu? Uh, they'd have a daily provision of flour. A lot of times people think that they'd be baking hard uh, hardtack. Uh, that's actually not existent at this time. It would be a different name. It's actually called ship's bread. Um, a lot of the sailors would use it. That's why it was called that. Um, so they'd bake things like that. They'd bake bread as well with earthen ovens that they'd build out here. Um, and so they had a, a wide range of things that they could use with that flour. Uh, they were also given a daily ration of parched corn and sl uh, freshly slaughtered or salted beef. Um, a common misconception is that the armies that would come out here would go out and hunt in the woods for their food. But I know if any of you guys are hunters, imagine 150 soldiers with red coats running out through the forest uh, causing commotion. I don't think you'd find any animals out there. And so that was uh, not what they would do. The army would have freshly supplied that for them. A uh, principal reason why Washington picks the Great Meadows. You see the natural fodder source for his animals, the grass and uh, the natural water source as well. Uh, those animals could be uh, natural grazing here. Uh, principal reason why he picks the Great Meadows to make a camp of operations. Um, and then uh, as well with the, the beef, they'd also uh, get their beverage. Does anybody want to take a guess on what their uh, daily provision for their beverage would be? Rum. Rum, that's right. A lot of people see beer first, but it was rum at this time. Um, actually, the British Army would continue to issue rum all throughout uh, the 18th and 19th century, uh, pretty much. Um, not only did the men love that provision and it kept them fighting in the field, uh, but it was also a health reason. Uh, these guys are coming out here to the frontier, the back country, finding water. Uh, who knows what happens in that water, where it's coming from. And so they'd use the rum to dilute some of the water, uh, making it more healthy to drink. They're trying to prevent infectious disease such as scurvy, dysentery, um, harmful things that would prove you unfit for service uh, at the time of the battle. Actually, at the time of this battle, uh, there's over 100 men that are actually unfit for service because of those diseases uh, out here on the country. And so Washington already has a very few number um, at his disposal even fit for service because of those things that they're trying to prevent.